Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more Total War Rome 2 here today on the channel. We're back on DEI, Divide et Impera. I'm going to be starting a Spartan Let's Play. We're using the same sub mods we used for my Athenian campaign before. So, without further ado, let's play the intros and get stuck into a campaign. of Epirus are fools. Having utterly failed to conquer Rome, they crawl back and presume to conquer Greece. To try is not to win. They will know this when you meet them in battle. Macedon may join you, but they are no better in the end. Alexander's conquests have left them with delusions of grandeur. They will be checked, as will every other aggressor. You may fare better working with Athens and other true Greek states, but history has often taught otherwise. Ultimately, trust only in Sparta, and you will prevail. Okay, guys, welcome to the campaign map. Oh, it's good to be back in DEI. It's been a while. So... The last time I actually did a Spartan DEI campaign on the channel was about five, six years ago. I had to look back through the catalogue, and that was such an early version of DEI. It's crazy to see how far this mod has come. So I thought I'd play as Sparta and conquer the known world. So we currently have our King of Sparta, Arius. Um, I think that's how you would say that, because it's Greek. Um, there's a German footballer called Royce, so it's not a Royce, <laughs> I don't think. We're technically a kingdom, we might be able to form the Spartan Empire eventually. We currently control 40% of the government, and we've got a couple of other dynasties and families here we have to watch out for. So we have the Greek states, Greek knowledge, plus 5 research rate, and classic heritage as well. A plus 2 cultural conversion, nice. And let's have a look at the traits, because we've got Kingdom, um, we're Imperium 1. Oh, we have an inept leader, apparently. Okay, that's not good. Um, so Sparta, let's see what we're working with. Helot Repression and Spartan Warrior Increased. Um, very high political power, perfect. Decreased Slave Unhappiness. That's good, so we'll be able to sell them off eventually. Increased experience in the rank of Spartans. And then, of course, we just have the kingdom there. There's our logistics and overall influence. And there's some of the parties. Nothing too crazy just yet we have to worry about, of course. Okay, so that's just the summary there of the faction. Let's have a look at our technology. So, we could just sort of rush Spartans. <laughs> Let's try and get our best heavier units. Greek unit upgrade, but I think I want to wait until we get a better economy. So, what we'll do is we'll get the tax rate and public order 
A buff from legal institutions. I think going down the civic part of the tech tree early on in this Spartan campaign is probably the play. Okay, so we've got a couple of missions here. Complete control of two provinces. We can head towards that. Um, so we've got an economic, cultural, and military victory. I think, looking at this, I think this is doable. 60 settlements. Hellas, Macedon, Latium, Syria, Asia, and Thrace. 240 units is quite a lot. But if we could maybe get some military alliances in those provinces as well, we don't have to manually conquer all of them. We might be able to do that. But yeah. So the main plan early on for this episode is to conquer the Greek peninsula, bring it all under Spartan rule. And let's move my spy up here just to have a look at Athens. Now... We could leave Athens, potentially an ally with them, but the major problem is, is that I'm going to be, if I do that, hamstringing myself for the entire campaign because we don't have a port. They've got a decent garrison there. So I think mobilizing, striking, hitting Athens early on is definitely the play. Just trying to rush them and blitzkrieg them. We do have a better starting roster than the Athenians because we can rely on our Spartan warriors. We've got some mercenaries here as well, which I could dive into. So here are our Spartan hoplites. Let's get a couple of those. We'll try and do the similar tactic, just trying to rush our major adversary early on. Athens, um, like we did in the Athenian campaign, because it is winnable, this battle. Um, we've also got some Greek mercenaries here we could bring in. Maybe some Cretan archers as well. Because that's the main thing. We just don't have a port, which is going to be annoying. Um, and to take the entire region of Hellas, we do need to take Crete as well. We'll upgrade Sparta as a settlement, and we will also upgrade our military building. We can't get any champions or agents just yet. We have a little bit of money left in our treasury. So what we'll do is we'll try and bring in a family member that is not a faction leader from another faction. So we can maybe potentially bring him into our own in the future. So we might have to pay a little bit of cash for him, which you just have to take the financial hit on. Because you don't really want to give power, influence and prestige to one of the faction leaders of the other dynasties and family families so this guy looks all right he's got a crazy looking hat <laughs> i like the look of it um just looking stats wise because we want to be able to get someone we can adopt in the future so we only can get one more army then that's it and then a navy we won't need to rely on a navy just yet because it's going to take us quite some time before we can secure the greek peninsula so we'll move you in here and what do we want? So, we could maybe get some cheaper units. Or should we just get some more Spartans eventually? Hmm. I think we'll just... Hmm. End the turn and continue. Because we're not going to be able to get any more. There's no point of queuing them up just yet. So, I've moved to the border. We're not at war with the Athenians just yet. They want a non-aggressional oh, pact. <laughs> <laughs> the Athenian boys see the brave Spartans on the border and like, yeah, we need a non-aggression pack. No, thank you. We do have a lot of same blood and cultural affinity with a fair few factions. So we might be able to get some confederations in the future. That'd be fantastic. From, I don't know, Massalia to Syracuse to Camaria. Okay. So they're going to be mustering as well. Uh, so we have three more units before we can push against the Athenians. Okay, so I guess we'll try and poison the wells. Do an army sabotage if we're lucky. Just to reduce their numbers and efficiency. Failed. Oh no. Okay, that's not good. So four units inside in the garrison. So, what I'll do is I'll hire some mercenaries on my border, and then I reckon try and get someone theirs. So, let's sort by relations. Who actually likes us at the moment? We probably... We can't get any trade agreements, so... There hasn't been a point welcome, to dive into diplomacy, welcome. really. It's only would be non-aggressional packs. Uh, Egypt like me quite a bit, which is good. Maybe just starting off getting some decent relations with them will allow us to have free-flowing trade in the future. 
So non aggression pack, we might even be able to demand some money out of them. Okay, we're not going to get 3,000. We're about to get a K or so, because we want to try and get as much money from the AI as possible to try and essentially pay for our mercenaries in war, but they don't seem to be inclined, the Egyptians in particular. Um, the Macedonians to the north, we've got Larissa and Epirus. It's probably not a bad idea getting just decent relations with them, or at least staying neutral. And is this a new faction? I haven't seen this before, because it's usually like a Larissa faction. Alright, cool. Um, they're not at war with anyone, just checking, no. Because sometimes you can join their war. And then you can get better relations with the faction. If you're already going to war with someone, you might as well join the oppositional war just to get those um, free public relations increased. Okay, so let's get four, uh, two Cretan archers, four mercenaries in total, and then a, a mercenary hoplite unit, and then another cavalry unit. So, yeah. Sometimes mercenaries are region locked. Like... You can get mercenaries in Sparta, and then sometimes you can get more in Athens. So, looking at the army build, they outnumber us by about 1,700. But that is a little bit deceiving, as they do have a lot of, essentially, peasants and rabble. So what I'll do is, we'll siege out Athens. If we have to siege it, we will, but we'll have to wait a little bit, because... Pikes and hoplites are not the best at aggressive sieges in DEI. And what I'll do is I'll move my secondary army up to be able to get some more of our cheaper Spartan units in. So what I'm hoping for is if they can attack us in the end turn. Uh, slingers is probably the best play early on, getting those helot slingers in over the archers because we don't have to do too many armor-piercing rounds like... They don't have crazy armor like us Spartans do. So let's end the turn and continue and see how the AI and the Athenians react to their threat of conquest. Okay, so they've actually attacked me here and it swung massively back in my favor now, which is fantastic. It was nearly 70% not in. We do have a reinforcing army as well, which will help us out, but we are still, we are still very much outnumbered. Okay, so let's chuck a quick save, and we'll fight this one on the battlefield. So, this is a huge opportunity here. It's make or break. If we don't win this battle, we're going to basically stuff up our early game, and we could very much fall into ruin. So we've got the Battle of Athens, 278 BC. We have three Spartan hoplite units, then the General's Spartan bodyguard, two Cretan archers, and two cav. The rest made up of junk. Okay, so let's start into the deployment. Oh no, the Athenians have brought the weather. It is foggy, it is pouring down with rain. Um, hang on, is the deployment zone over here? Why, <laughs> Why are my units facing the wrong way? Okay, quickly, reorganize the line. <laughs> right. Why was that? That's so strange. Okay, so, looking at the topography of the battlefield, quite flat to be honest, which is good. So what I want to do is I want to get my General's Bodyguard and my Spartan units to make a strong long front line. We'll chuck on Shield Wall eventually. We have these two lighter units as a lighter auxiliary force. So what I'll do is I'll put them on the flanks because we might be able to rotate, maybe get an angle and flank if we're lucky. We've got our archers there. But let's have a look at the Divide et Impera units. I am using a lot of HD textures. A lot of model updates as well. You can find them on the Steam Workshop quite easily. That um, makes the weather, the seas look great. But unfortunately at the moment, it is pouring down with rain in Athens. So I wanted a sort of nice, hot, warm and sunny Peloponnesian summer battle. But it's a sort of wet and dreary affair. But here are the Spartans, keen to get things going. And wow, look at that shield with the huge A as well. I love the white on it. We've got our slingers and archers in the secondary line. And then we've got our auxiliary lighter armored units on the flanks and then the cavalry as well. All right, let's start the battle. So let's move up slightly to try and close the distance. 
The enemy forcing force is approaching. Thank you, Mark Strong. Mute you. <laughs> okay, so they do have two armies coming in, so do we. So we want to be able to try and destroy this first one coming up. So we'll move everyone up. Try and get to a better position. But look look how co how fast those lighter units are just gaining ground. Crikey. Compared to their heavier hoplites. So we just need to keep an eye on you. We'll flank with my cavalry. And we'll just reorganize everything slightly. So we've got some heavy shock we have to watch out for. Oh, we might actually be better off just to charge that. Our light spears should be able to pin them down. They aggressively charged us there and got caught. Okay, we'll try and skirmish them from behind. Three more units coming up here. So let's try and angle you guys on the right-hand side. We do have our own reinforcements coming in eventually. Another general's bodyguard. It will take him quite a long time to get to our side of the battlefield. We should be okay. So we held on to that charge. Fine. We managed to kill 20. And you know what? Let's give out some attack orders. If I can swarm, surround, and destroy this first army... We'll be able to deal with the larger secondary force. They are putting a lot of cavalry in here. We don't want them to hit my main line, so we'll send my cavalry there on the right to come around. So let's give out some attack orders with these hoplites, and just trying to slowly but surely surround and envelop. But let's get some cinematic shots where we can. So they're trying to hold the line. The Spartans are charging well on through. Man, the Spartans are probably the second best faction in the game. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. The Romans are fantastic. Uh, go check out my Roman campaign if you haven't already after this video. But the army roster just already is so, so strong. I can't wait to get the world-class, sort of elite <laughs> Spartan units eventually. I'm just like, this first battle, we are just carving through this first initial bunch of infantry because we did have to be a little bit more tactically smart in my Athenian campaign. We did struggle a bit to break through the Spartan line, but we are just carving up these Athenian boys today. Good! We'll bring the Spartan way of life to the known world. So, we're about to win this first one here. Oh, there's actually an amphibious assault here. Typical Athenians coming fresh off the boats. Okay. And... There's two, basically, army groups coming in. So we've dealt with the first wave. We have to deal with the other two. But let me know in the comments where you'd like me to expand and conquer. Feedback and suggestions, of course. I think securing the Greek peninsula... I, I think securing Greece is definitely the play. And sort of divide and conquering the Greek city-states. We'll try and hit Larissa and Macedon in each other, potentially, or like, I don't know, Epirus, for example. So, the main decision is, once we secure Greece, which will take a fair few episodes, we might, we might be able to get it done today. I'm going to play for an hour or so, but we'll just have to see how we go. I'll play for a couple hours and edit this video down to about an hour. But yeah, the main thing is... Do we go east or west? Do we go after the Romans? Or do we try and conquer the lands in the east? Like Alexander. Okay, so it looks like their front line is actually coming to engage me now. My skirmishes are doing quite well. We just need to hold the line and they're going to trickle on in. They do outnumber us quite a bit. So we have to be smart, secure, and hold the front line. So let's drop a phalanx here. And make a shield wall, essentially. That's what this ability is. And we'll try and chuck some of these guys on the angles. We've already managed to soften them up so much. I think these were like the cheaper peasant units that have just smashed on our front line. Clashed. Like water on rock. But yeah, because we've got two options, basically. We could rush the Romans, which would be more advantageous. But it might be a little bit too, I don't know, cheesy, sweaty. Do you want the Roman Empire to be built up a bit? Make it more difficult for me? Because the Romans are the hardest faction in the game. Like, they're the best faction. They've got so many fantastic abilities. And their units are amazing. Mostly due to swordsmen. They have, like, just, like, the best swordsmen in the game. The Thracians have some pretty decent two-handed swordsmen. But, yeah, do we allow them to expand out of the Italian peninsula, build up, and have a little bit of a challenge? Or do we go east, which we will have an easier time? 
push into Asia Minor, Pergamon. We'll, we'll struggle against like the Seleucids and like, I don't know, maybe Parthians and, and Egypt. But we will feel better because they have a lot of cavalry and pikes and stuff. I don't know, east or west, where should we go after conquering Greece? Okay, so we're just being a little bit passive here, holding the front line, just trying to skirmish with my remaining units. My additional uh, generals come in as well, and we're out of ammunition with my cavalry. So let's just try and do some cycle charges here, hit their skirmishers. Although some of them are pretty decently armored, we should be okay. So this phalanx formation for the hoplites, we're just holding the line, it is thunder. And lightning going on this battlefield, a little bit hard to see. Zeus seems to be with us, Poseidon with the Athenians, I guess. <laughs> but the gods of war are probably smiling upon us. Okay. Oh, well, the god of war, Ares, I guess. Ares, Arius, a little bit of a simpler name. Maybe the Spartan King is the God of War incarnate. But as we are playing on DEI, we've got a lot of fantastic events coming up soon. Um, in my Egyptian and Epirus campaign, I think it's every, I don't know, 20, 40 turns, we do get um, general spawning. So we're going to be able to get the line of Leonidas eventually. We've got a lot of fantastic generals in my Athenian campaign. But speaking of this battle, we're doing tremendously well. By the time they made their way to the Spartan front line, they were exhausted, these Athenians. And our skirmishers are just really running them down. We'll try and get a nice cavalry charge in behind. And we've drawn out the Athenian garrison. And then Athens will be ours, which is huge because we're going to be able to connect a port uh, port city to our capital. We're going to be able to trade all our goods around the Mediterranean, which is fantastic. Sweet. Victory! Let's just continue to run down as many of them as we can, because we might have to still manually take the city of Athens if there's a large garrison inside. But off to a really good start, a fantastic victory for the Spartans. We laid a trap for the Athenians, and they took the bait. And now, we can push our advantage and try and take the men of Larissa to the north. I'm curious to look at the casualties sustained and inflicted. My cavalry probably did really well in this one. Skirmishes did well. The Spartans won't have too many kills, I don't think, because they were more playing a passive holding and controlling role. They were really relying on their melee defense rather than attack. And this cavalry will sort of... Inf yeah, like running down these guys will probably inflate the, car the cavalry's stats slightly. But that's alright. But a really good first victory. Let's end there. So heroic victory. We only lost about 200. Crikey. Oh, wow. Look at that. The cavalry did fantastic. The arch is decent. Oh my god, 700 kills! The mercenaries did a little bit better. Maybe they've got higher melee attack than the Spartan hoplites themselves. But yeah. They had the numbers, but not the quality. And the Spartan warrior was able to win out over the, the Athenians. Yeah, it's just because they had a little bit of a scrappy garrison. They did have a little bit of an army inside, and they also had that navy, but they just couldn't contend with the power of the Spartan Warhorse. Awesome. And there goes Cremonides. <laughs> it's a shame he was killed upon the battlefield in this alternative timeline. He was the sort of emperor of the Athenian Maritime Empire. <laughs> we did in the the last DEI series. Okay, so the brothers of Xenophon. Yeah, even that army conquered the known world. <laughs> but now is destroyed and brought down by the Spartans. So ransoming captives is actually a pretty good idea. Uh, getting slaves eventually is nice once you have the infrastructure to sell them in decent public order. We could kill the captives because then we can just march on in to 
Athens, but we could deal with the money. There's only... Well, I'm just trying to think. It will make the order resolve easier for us, but I think we'll get a little bit of money just to pay back those mercenaries that we used. So the Athenian garrison has been destroyed. To be fair, we ran down a fair few. We might be lucky just to march on in. Like, we might be able just to take Athens at the top of the turn. But Athens is a really good city to start off with. There's even some unique buildings in there from what I can remember. I think it's the port. It's kind of like Carthage. Okay, so we did lose 40 men. My god, we nearly lost more in the siege just sitting outside. Um, where's the icon to attack? There we go. Okay, so there's only uh, a small amount of forces remaining. So we'll, we'll order resolve this one. A decisive victory. And we're going to be able to march on in to the city of Athens and claim the Acropolis for Sparta. Okay. And... Wow, look how much money we get for looting. Where we get the loot? <laughs> um, 10,000. It's quite a bit, but it's public order. It's going to be a problem. We'll just occupy for now. Our Imperium's gone up and Athens has been destroyed. She's all over Red Rover. All right. Yeah, so they have this, like, port building, don't they? Yeah. Um, there's a military building inside. We probably could get rid of that because we've already got one in Sparta. And we'll upgrade Athens as well. Okay. And we'll move to our next target, which is Larissa in the north. So now that we have... Athens, as you can see, all of the port lanes have been opened up to us. So we can trade our wealth from Sparta Athena to Athens. Wisdom, so so we'll try and get well trade and agreements with Welcome. Knossos here. We might be able to get a confederation with them in the future, because it is quite annoying <laughs> to go to Crete and, and stuff like that. Because you have to build up a pretty decent navy. You have to make sure you're well supplied. We'll negotiate with the Egyptians as well. So this is where we're going to be able to get a lot of our money in this game. Trade. Because Greece does have a lot of fantastic resources. Like olives and marble. And now that we're starting to conquer a bit more. We can get more slaves. And we do have that decreased buff. Because of our historical uh, helot suppression. So we should be able to create a huge sort of helot second class <laughs> around the no world. Ah, oh, it sounds awfully miserable. <laughs> so Bithynia as well. Um, I'm just trying to think, should we bother getting trade with like people we're probably going to attack? Maybe not. Uh, Pergamon we can't trade with for whatever reason. We've got some Thracians, Daco Thracians in the north. I guess. Okay. So we do have some traditions and army upgrades now with Arrayus. So uh, it's usually the red, which gives you like more melee attack. Yeah. Because you've got to sort of pick and choose and go towards what will be your strengths. Like, for example... We already have fantastic armor and defense. I think our hoplites need melee attack because that's where we're, we're really going to struggle when we need to be aggressive and punch and push on through. It's always quite a smart idea as well to make your generals have essentially empire maintenance um, and minus corruption stuff because that stuff can be really quite annoying in the late game. So, you do take a decrease in being quite aggressive, maybe getting some movement and, and sort of some financial and, and public order buffs, but getting that minus empire maintenance will really save us for the late game. Okay, so it is currently winter now, 277 BC. I've skipped a little bit ahead. We've done some convalescing after the conquest of Athens, and we're going to make a play against Larissa. We currently have a full stack here with the Spartan King. We have four cavalry units, and in our main army, the rest made up of just hoplites and Spartans. And we're going to be pushing against Larissa, which they've changed... Uh, the faction, I think. Oh, I don't think they've, they've renamed the faction for whatever reason. Our spy has failed again. 
which is annoying. We'll seek a spouse with him as well. We eventually want to adopt General Zinn and secure the Spartan family line. But it's not going to be overly too big of a deal if he does die or... You never know, doesn't have any children. We are going to be able to get other nobles due to events in the future. Uh, the thing is, as well, playing as a Hellenic faction in Rome too, especially DEI, we do get a lot of buffs from festivals like the Thesmophoria and that Mushroom Cult one. Uh, the... Oh, is it Ulyss... I can't even remember now what it's called off the top of my head. The Ulyssalian Mysteries, that's it. Oh my god, it's already been a year that I've finished uni. I can't remember my history. <laughs> Right, so looking at the odds for this one, um, there was no one we could draw um, in and join the war. We'll just fight this one, even though we, by looking at the odds, overwhelmingly beat them odds-wise, but they do outnumber us slightly. But let's play this one, the Battle of Larissa, 277 BC, and try and secure the heart of Greece. Okay, let's start the battlefield. This is what I'm more talking about, a nice dry day. Oh, check out this map. This is atrocious. Oh, so we don't get, we get the RNG of the weather, a nice clear sunny day. So it's more or less just being able to see it on YouTube because the video can get compressed sometimes. It's hard to see when it's dark and rainy and a little bit miserable. But we've got a nice clean day, but this battle map is crazy. We've got to be really quite careful because we don't want to get fatigued pushing up those hills and slopes by the look of it. Okay, so they've even got deployables as well. Oh wow, they've really broken up the battlefield quite well. So we are attacking them at the end of the day, so we might have to be quite aggressive. But yeah, I don't know what we have to do. We'd sort of, We might as well just try and stay at the bottom of this valley. But they will get a high sort of charge advantage if they come on down. Let's just move my cavalry up to scout ahead. Because we don't want to... We're not going to be able to make the apex of the hill. Like, if we push up there, we're going to get caught in attack. The balance of power looking in the bottom left now has swung to about a 50-50. Which is probably more reasonable. Now that we're actually playing, it's a bit harder. So we've got cavalry on the left and right. So they both have skirmisher capacity, and we want to try and whittle down them. The um, oh, here they are. They're just hiding in the tree line there. So be careful. Let's move you further up here. So let's just try and skirmish, harass, and annoy the brave men of Larissa the best we can. We don't want any alliances or Delian... Or leagues forming in Greece. We want to divide and qu conquer, hit them and hit them hard, and try and unite all of Greece under Spartan rule. So we're just trying to skirmish at the moment. Trading casualties a little bit. We'll fire at these Greek citizens because they're a little bit lighter armored. Um. The Salian Hoplites here. So we've gone into our defensive formation as well. But here they come up over the mountain. They're actually coming at us with a decent amount of pace. Just needing to micro here. So they seem to be a little bit more aggressive, which is good. They might actually make their way towards my main line. Some of my Cretan archers and skirmishers are already getting some fantastic shots off. That's awesome. Because at the moment we do have a bit of a mixture. Five skirmisher units, two Cretan archers and the rest is made up of skirmishers because those Cretan archers are going to be a fantastic unit for us in the early game. Quite expensive but they will have fantastic armor piercing properties while the skirmishers have less but a huge ammunition bag. So far they seem to be a little bit discombobulated by the look of it. They are putting a lot on my right flank here which you have to watch out for and we are sort of just kiting, dragging and drawing them away but until they hit my front line, they could win this skirmisher affair. We're out of ammunition now with my cavalry, so we'll try and put some charges in on their skirmishers. We don't want to stay co too committed, because these guys are skirmishers at the end of the day. We basically just want to stop them firing. They are trying to flank on my right flank here, so let's just try and reform you. Hopefully you don't get caught. 
and they're putting a lot of pressure on the Spartan right hand side. We, have, we might have to move in a moment. We'll get a good charge here against these Greek archers just to stop them firing upon us. I don't think they ever got some decent shots. It looks like they're forming into a formation to push up against the Spartan front line. But we are starting to rain fire into the bottom. Oh, they're raising their shields nice and high, forming a pretty decent wall. And here comes the first charge from the brave men of Larissa against the Spartan front line. Hold, men! Hold the line! And a lot of them basically just got smashed there. And even, it kind of looked like there was a bit of a, let's say, a, a phalanx formation. How hard they hit that. Okay, let's drop down some buffs. I haven't even needed to use them so far. Okay, and let's push for those cavalry there. We might be able to catch them. Okay, we're holding for now quite well. They are skirmishing us out a bit. We just need to keep an eye on that. We don't want that to basically sit back and hit us with impunity too much. They're putting a lot on that right-hand side, but hopefully this formation, the phalanx one, is as good as the Roman one, because the Roman one's actually insane. <laughs> the ability just to hold the front line nearly invincibly. Okay, that cavalry unit seems to be coming back and around, so let's try and cycle charge on in that. And even if we can't, completely and utterly destroy those skirmish units. As long as we can just disrupt their firing patterns, that'll be better, good enough. We're actually losing on that right-hand side to that cav unit, unfortunately. I think actually what I'll do, there seems to be like five units just sitting here with their tail, well, hands in their pockets. I was about to say, tails between their legs seems when they're running. <laughs> they just seem they're not doing too much. Twiddling their thumbs. That's what we say here. Okay. Yeah, there we go. We'll just try and push them back now. The men of Larissa are probably giving us a better fight than the Athenians, to be honest. And I don't know if they had much better unit quality, but this guy's just getting stuck in. Oh my god, no, this poor Spartan's getting dropped. He's getting beaten like a sack. Oh no, he's gone back up. <laughs> oh, he hit the deck like a sack of spuds. And somehow, with two big haymakers, <laughs> two big knocks to the forehead, he still managed to get up and stab him. Oh, yeah, not, mate. <laughs> okay. Alright, let's try and charge around this. They're actually really holding me here. So a nice, decent charge. From that little bit of high ground. Need to turn that off. Okay, so their central is breaking now. It's at that right-hand side. It's still really holding. <laughs> They're putting a lot of pressure on it, but we're just chilling, which is fine. Okay, let's get us around the other side. And yeah, they are about to capitulate. The men of Larissa. So there we've taken two provinces in today's video, which is pretty decent. Decent progression. We started off well with a fantastic result with the Athenians, and now that we've beaten Larissa, hopefully we can go on and continue to snowball to be the main dominant power in Greece. We want to try and control it. Alright. But, at the end of the day, Larissa and Athens are definitely not the top two hardest factions in Greece. Probably after us, I'd probably rank Macedon and then Epirus. But sometimes Epirus can get stuck in a bit of a perpetual war with the Romans because they do have the former Spartan colony of Taurus under their control. Like, they control the Greek population in Brundisium. But a decisive victory there. Yeah, it actually shot up to 500 casualties. So we lost more in this fight than in the Athenian ones. And we were still slightly outnumbered. But here are the stats. Oh, okay. It was actually not the Spartan hoplites that took most of the casualties. It was just my other hoplites there. My cavalry took a little bit of a beating because I decided to chuck them into melee after skirmishing quite a bit. Archers did quite well. But you got to give it to the men of Larissa. They were brave and valiant to the end. 
I'm sure the Spartans would respect that somewhat. What? <laughs> Fighting valiantly to the bitter end. Decisive victory after a heroic. So, what's the resource in Larissa as well? I need to check up on that because we probably should start putting, investing money into those trade, tradable resources so we can flog them out through the port of Athens and start making more money because, yeah, I, I think that's the best way to make money in this game that I've found. Sacking settlements when you can afford it, but I do want to conquer these lands. I don't really want to raise them, you know what I'm saying? Um, make sure you release captives when it's advantageous, or rather ransom, because you get a decent amount of coin. Or oh, what is it? What is in this? It's not Denari, it's... what is it? Oh, they said it all the time in Assassin's Creed o Odyssey. Uh, Drachmir. Yeah. Got any spare Drachmir, Lusa? There we go. Drachmir. That's it. Right. So, we've managed to take Larissa to secure the valuable resource of Drachmir. <laughs> okay, they have olives in there. That's what I thought. I couldn't... I knew it was something important. Uh, we'll keep the military building here because we can use it as a base of operations to push into Pella and Apollonia if need be. Okay, so we've got more of these traits. Ferocious Warrior. Gravitas melee attack. I do quite like that. Uh, melee defense for all... Uh, missile damage is actually prob... Oh, yeah. Uh. It's a tough one. We already have a lot of melee defense, but we could get more. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. 277 BC, it is a spring weather. A little bit of a, a spring rain. But we're in a really good position here. So we can either go after Apollonia or Pella. There's a small garrison inside this 13. We could have a look. So, oh, hang on. Macedon are at war, and then Epirus are at war as well. We'll join the... What are these? So these are just barbarians, some Celts to the north. Will you give me some money if I join your war against Macedon? They will. So we'll get relations Lord. with them, because I don't have any... To be honest, I think for this campaign, I want to push east. I want to push west. I don't really want to push too far north. Like, if we need to secure Thrace, we will, but I don't want to go over the Danube. No way. Because you can get absolutely bogged down in the north <laughs> there. Anyway, we'll siege out Pella now. And, yeah, I guess the Macedonians have been fighting the barbarians in the north. Like, where is their main army? Because there are some provinces in DEI and Rome 2 that are just not valuable. It takes ages to get to. Very hard to secure public order. Like, is it even worth pushing into the steppe lands? I don't think so. Anyway, let's fight this one. Um, the AI seems hyper-aggressive in this save for whatever reason. They continually just want to march out against me. So we have the Battle of Pella, 277 BC. Okay, so we have a huge opportunity here to take Alexander's homeland, Macedon, and his, and his father's former capital. So this looks like the exact same battle map, nearly identically. We uh, played in the Athenian one. Unfortunately, it's foggy. <laughs> we've had rain, we've had sunshine, and now we've had fog. I was complaining before about not being able to see, and this probably takes the cake. <laughs> um, we do have flammable shot with our... Archers, we're not going to need them for this fight, but maybe when we face Epirus, if we'd like, we face like elephants, that'll be good. But I was just sort of checking to see um, if there was some sort of, I don't know, different variant of ammunition. Because it's it's a tiller, doesn't it, that has the heavy shot and the, the, the different types of ammunition. Okay, so my cavalry from the battle against Larissa is still a little bit... Exhausted. We didn't have time to replenish and repair. But here is 
the famed Macedonian phalanx, which we must watch out for. Because it can be quite fearful. We need to fear the phalanx and respect it. So, we'll move our missile cavalry up. Because if we can get a good angle, we might be able to take some of those pike boys out. But we do have to watch out for the very heavy Macedonian cavalry. They've got a pretty decent roster. Their cavalry is far superior to mine. We don't even have any decent cavalry yet. It's only really this harassing skirmish jab cav. And they're going to catch us there. And the pikes would probably do quite well against our hoplites. Sitting a little bit further back. And they do have more additional reinforcements coming in. So we'll just try and skirmish them out. They are going to be skirmished quite a bit as well. My missile cav... Uh, depleted numerically they're quite weak and just to top it off they have some pretty decent skirmishes here themselves the Macedonians okay oh they seem to be routing yeah I don't have much hope for these skirmishes just try and do your best and try and take out as many of them as you can and we'll try and kite and draw the main Macedonian line back towards my own. They seem to be making some nice progression towards my front line, which is good. We might have to sort of angle my front line again if we need to. But we just want to try and be annoying and try and harass them. Yeah. You might be better off just to charge in now that you're out of ammunition. Just got to be careful because we haven't got much too much cav yet. I'm happy for these guys to be a little bit expendable, but a nice charge there. In the in the sort of afternoon. Oh, here we go. They've got their more unit. They've got more units coming in. Our archers should be really targeting a cavalry unit. But let's try and move up here. They seem to be occupying the sort of bottom left-hand side of the battlefield as they come in. So let's just try and gain some ground. Crikey. My cavalry is getting stuck there and they're losing. So I'm going to have to pull out. Oh, what's this? Oh, that's pretty cheeky. Because of the fog, I actually can't see the the banners on the battlefield. Okay, um, we'll grab these five units that are sitting at the back. Get out of the phalanx formation. We need to take this ground quick. We're going to be surrounded here. Just what we want. A good hearty fight from all angles. Okay, let's move here. Oh, as if they deployed there. I didn't even catch that. I didn't even clock on. Um, so you're going to have to be slightly a bit more. We've got a lot of skirmishes, but we're fine. I don't know if we're going to be able to get there, because we're a little bit slow moving compared to this reinforcing army coming on in. Oh no. Quickly now, gain some ground. My cavalry's been spent. Because they just weren't repaired. We'll chuck down a buff. Okay, so now that my archers are starting to... Hit those phalanx. They haven't even engaged me. They're just sitting in the sun. Enjoy your sunburn. And arrows <laughs> ripping you to pieces. Okay, that's not too bad. A bit of a makeshift secondary arm. We've got this like crazy V formation going on. An upside down A. Which seems to be on all of our shields. <laughs> We're actually using the formation that's on our banner. That's so stupid. <laughs> Deploy the V! Or the A. I guess it's a, it depends how you look at it, I guess. It's a, it's a, yeah, deploy the A! <laughs> oh god. So goofy. Okay, let's move you up here. So, the Macedonians, although they caught me, what a yeah, look at this! It's just an A! <laughs> For uh, Alpha. The Alpha Spartan Chads we are. Okay, so the Pikes are starting to get into me here. If we prolong that fight, it's probably not good for us. It looks a lot better, the battlefield, as we zoom down, because you don't see this 
fog, but I guess it's higher up. Okay, it's still quite close. It's I actually think it's probably more so in, in their favor than ours. We're struggling because we're actually against a, a good army that has decent skirmishes, for one. We lack our skirmish cav now. They have um, decent cavalry and, and pikes as well, which can be a little bit of a problem for our hoplites. Because they're essentially, they have a, a bigger pointy stick than us. Pikes versus hoplites. But we should have probably decent melee defense. We just need to open up some angles. They have a lot of skirmishes here. Okay, let's give out some attack orders here, because there's like some units, like the, what are these, like, just like Greek citizens? This guy's wearing a toga, <laughs> and a dagger, like we should be able to push through that. We're actually losing a couple of decent casualties, this could be a bit of a round, okay, now, now we've broken through that, perfect. We've broken through that first line. Okay, just don't get too carried away. Because we're going to battle of hasting ourselves, <laughs> moving out of our position, and then getting caught. We don't want to do that. Okay, now that cavalry is running. Reform. There's a couple of melee units that are intertwined. There's like four, five actually. I think, yeah, because they're just sitting back hitting us with pot shots. Let's, let's be a bit more aggressive. Let's go with a high octane ferocious attack. Okay. So the big A worked. The big alpha play. <laughs> Alright, charge on out, boys. For Sparta. Come back with your shield or on it. There's another quiet. For Gerard Butler. For Scotland. <laughs> oh god. Such an enjoyable movie. 300. <laughs> it's just, it's just funny. <laughs> Speaking of a goofy movie, like people get really upset with the historical inaccuracies of that, but it's based off the graphic novel, supposedly. Because wasn't there like a goat at one point in the camp ripping on something, <laughs> smoking something? <laughs> Like, it's like, oh, they got it all wrong. But then there's, like, some goat, half goat dude. I'm, I'm not wrong on that. Surely in that 300 movie, there's a goat in, like, Xerxes' camp. Like, he's either, he's on the flute or he's, he's doing something in that tent. Anyway. We've got the Macedonians, Macedonians, in a full retreat, and we're going to be able to conquer Pella, which is awesome, because that's another massive and huge influential port city that we can trade from. And now we just need to run down the remaining units that are holding on. We might be able to get a decent little charge here with this cavalry. Good stuff. But I'm having a blast being back on Total War Rome 2. I just thought I'd sit down, play for a couple hours today, and start a DEI Spartan campaign. And we'll try and hit the uh, military victory conditions, which I think is definitely doable with this faction. Some of the victory conditions can be a little bit... Well, the thing is, some of the military victory conditions and victory conditions are based on... Vanilla Rome 2, which can be easier to achieve, and some of them are actually surprisingly hard, but I do want to be doing more Let's Plays back on the channel, and yeah, let me know in the comments. I do have plans and lists, but I felt like going back to Rome 2, DUI, because it's been a while. The last campaign was the Athenian one, and that video did really well, and even recently I've had a lot of traction. I was nearly tempted back to go to the Roman, go back to that Roman campaign. I've still got the save. Maybe I should do that as well, because that, like, I, st like, I formed the Western Roman Empire with decisive victory, by the way. Um, oh, we lost about the same as the one in Larissa. I just felt like those units were just like 
smashing me a lot. I think we just took high casualties with a couple of units, which scared me. Like, even those mercenary, Greek mercenary units, we lost a bit. But yeah, I've still got the save for that Roman campaign. It's just the, um... Yeah, the grind to form the Roman Empire. Like, I, I think I played that campaign for, like, a month. I swear. And I only just conquered the Western Roman Empire. Like, I played it a lot. But... I didn't get to fulfill the empire. I don't know, maybe I should do some streams on that or something. I've still got the save. I've still got the saves for all my campaigns. I don't delete them. But you just sort of got to pick a sweet spot where you basically because the thing is with total war, I don't I, it happens quite a bit. If you get to a point where you're just snowballing and you just basically you can auto resolve everything. You sort of lose the fun, you know what I mean? You get to the point where you're just like, I can't be defeated now. And like, is it worth spending the next I don't know, 10 hours just to get that victory, even though you've already won? So, I do try to hit my victory conditions as quick as possible. Try not to linger. But it's still, yeah, we'll just see how we go with this campaign. That's what I'm thinking. Do I go east or west? East will be. Um, probably, it's like, the thing is, if we push west, we might be able to smash the Romans before they build up, but if we go east first, we might be able to conquer it all and then have a decent fight against the Romans, because they'll have, like, Gaul and, and maybe even, like, Carthage and stuff. I don't know. We'll just have to see how we go. We might get attacked. Like, you might, we might just get rushed by the Romans. They might, like, smash efforts. Like, you never know. Maybe I'm being too expansionist, <laughs> and I should be turtling a bit more. But anyway, good victory. Our first against Macedon. I feel like they were hampered, potentially, by the war to the north. Like, we should be smashing Larissa and Athens quite early on, especially if they're attacking us. If we had to manually siege these settlements, we would have lost a lot more Spartan lives than we've lost in this series. I don't think we've even hit 2,000 casualties. Maybe, about. Anyway, uh, Pella will be able to fall to Spartan occupation now. They have a small garrison inside, but we'll order resolve the rest. And now, the great city of Pella has fallen to Spartan occupation. Decisive victory, and let's occupy and share around the Drachmir. But the Antigonid kingdom is no more. The descendants of Alexander have been kaput. I guess now the only sort of royal line is yeah sort of towards Epirus his faction. Isn't he related to Alexander? I think so. Distantly or whatever. Uh, we could build a harbour here though in Pella. That might be smart. Ready for Okay, so we'll move this secondary army up to Larissa, and, yeah, so, melee damage, a uh, missile damage there. Okay, well, unfortunately it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching, play for a couple of hours here, and I'm going to edit down this video to about an hour for you guys. So, we're in a really good position to start episode 2 coming out soon. We have nearly the entirety of Hellas and Macedon under our control. I think we push towards Epirus or Illyria. Um, and then we'll maybe go against the Barbarians in the north. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you watched all the way through, really do appreciate it. Let me know feedback and suggestions in the comments, of course. Stay tuned for more Let's Plays and Total War Room 2 on the channel. But yeah, i got to say thanks, guys. Um, I've got to say thank you to this month's channel patrons and channel members, and I'm going to play the outro now. Thanks guys, take care. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you'd like to stay connected with me. Let me know feedback and suggestions for the video. Got to say a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tal, Liam B, Kyle P, Tom C, and Wyatt P. So thanks guys, my name has been Simsy, much love from Australia, goodbye.